Chole Bhature, a much loved Indian street food. Chickpeas cooked with spices served with a fried bread called Bhatura, loved by Indians world over. And today we're asking the question, will it meet? Horns up and welcome to a brand new episode of Headbangers Kitchen. Folks, today we're taking Chole Bhature and we're going to be putting beef and bacon both in it. Anyway, enough jibber jabber, let's get cooking. Oh yes, we're using bacon in this recipe and I've got some smoked bacon. As always, lay your bacon down in a cold pan and then turn it on and then let the heat slowly build up. This is a nice gentle way to render out the bacon fat. So you don't need any oil or any butter or anything. Just fry that bacon till it's nice and crispy and once it's done, remove it from the pan. Now you can see we have a lot of bacon fat left over. We need all of that. So pour that out into a bowl and save it. Now I'm going to take the crispy bacon and chop it up nice and fine. You can also blitz it in a blender and make a bacon dust out of it. Let's make the dough for our batura and it starts with 2 cups of all-purpose flour, a quarter cup of semolina or rava, a tablespoon of powdered sugar, half a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of baking powder, a quarter cup of yogurt or dahi, a teaspoon of salt, the crispy fried bacon and 2 tablespoons of bacon fat. And now I just gently mix everything together to get it well incorporated. And then we say hello to Marissa who works with me and who takes over the making of this dough. As she slowly adds about 3 4 cup of water and mixes everything well to form the dough. Once the dough has come together, it's time to knead it and this will take some elbow grease and some time. So do that till the outside of the dough starts to look smooth. And then we give the dough a little rub down with some bacon fat, put it in a bowl and cover it with a cloth and let it sit for about an hour or two. For Chole Bature, you need Chole aka chickpeas and we are using these white kind called Kabuli Chana. And you need to soak these in water overnight or for 8 hours before you can use them. Have a look at the soaked one compared to the unsoaked one. You can see the difference and that's why you really need to soak them before you can use them. Anyway, say hello to these boneless beef shanks and my sexy black glove. For this recipe, I will be using shank meat and cutting it into cubes but you can also use any slow cooking cut of beef that you like or if you don't eat beef, you can just make this recipe with lamb or mutton. Once it's chopped, it's time to cook it. I will be using my instant pot to cook these shanks and I heat it up and add some ghee and then in go the shanks. I just want to kind of sear them and seal in all the flavor. Make sure you are using the saute function on the instant pot. My secret ingredient in all Chole Bature is a beef stock cube and I just add that in right now and that is going to give us a super beefy beef stock and well seasoned meat. Once seared in goes some water and I cover it and turn the pressure knob to sealing position and pressure cook the beef shanks for 25 minutes. We are also going to make some fresh tomato puree by just chopping up our tomatoes and putting them in the blender. Of course, you can use store-bought puree no problem but this is just super easy and quick to make. Now we also want to make a spice bag so get a muslin or a cheese cloth and to that I will add bay leaves, black cardamom, green cardamom, a cinnamon stick, two tea bags or loose tea and then just tie that up in a bundle. The tea bags are what give the chana the dark color. Now this beef is fully cooked but it's still going to be slightly tough and chewy but we are going to cook it again with the chickpeas. So in go the chickpeas to join the beef along with the water in which they were soaking, the spice packet that we made and half a teaspoon of baking soda. And now we pressure cook this for another 17 minutes. The chana and the beef are done cooking and it's time to open up the instant pot. Now you can see there is a lot of scum floating on top. I will use a strainer and remove as much of it as I can. Nothing wrong with it, it's just a meat, protein and completely edible but we want to remove it anyway. Now we can check the chickpeas and they should squash easily and then you know it's cooked. Same with the beef, you should be able to cut it with a spoon and it should be nice and tender. Finally, let's cook the chole and I heat up a mix of duck and chicken fat in my pan and to that I add leftover bacon fat and then in go some cumin seeds and chopped onions. Now we saute this till the onions are translucent and then in go some sliced green chilies, some chopped ginger and some chopped garlic. And now we continue to saute those onions and sweat them down and get that garlic browning a bit. Now in goes some chole masala. 
and I'm just using a store bought masala because it's convenient and easy to use. Then in goes the pureed tomatoes, saute that, mix well and then I add in some of the liquid from the instant pot which is essentially a beef and chickpea stock at this point. Cover it and let it cook for 6 to 8 minutes. Halfway through I open it up and add more of that beef and chickpea stock into it and continue to let it cook. After 8 minutes I open it up and taste it. I add some more of that chole masala and salt to amp up the flavors and then in goes the beef and the chickpeas. Cover this and cook it for another 5 minutes. After which we are going to use the back of the spoon and smash some of the chickpeas which is going to help thicken up the sauce. Now to finish up this chole I get a pan on the stove and heat up a tablespoon of ghee. To that I add some chopped coriander, another tablespoon of that chole masala and let that fry and get fragrant. And then I pour that into the chole and that my friends is going to amp this up even more. Like it's crazy what flavor this adds. Anyway I finish it with some coriander and give everything a final good mix. And our beef chole is ready. And it's time to make those bhaturas to go with it. Now I get my dough and I divide it up into 6 portions and I roll those into balls and since my rolling skills are not up to the par, the hand of Marissa gets involved again and all those dough balls are then put on the baking tray when done and laid to rest for about 15 minutes. Now it's time to roll out the bhatura and using a bit of bacon fat to lube up, my hands and a rolling pin I roll out the bhatura. Then I drop it into some hot oil to deep fry and then the hand of Marissa gets involved again. The bhatura fluffed up a bit but not a crazy amount. So the hand of Marissa rolled out the second one as well which didn't fluff up as much but by the time we were on to bhatura 5 and 6 we managed to get them to fluff up. You basically don't want to roll it out too thin, if it's a little thick they fluff up more. Anyway, you cook and you learn. Finally we served up the chole with bhatura number 1 and 2 garnished with some julienne, ginger and coriander and that is our beef and bacon chole bhature done and ready. And of course you gotta look at that bhatura. I gotta tear it and show you how yummy and fluffy it looks and then of course I gotta show you how tender and succulent that beef is and then I finally gotta get a nice bite of that beef chole and bacon bhatura and chow down. Hoo yeah! But anyway enough jibber jabber let's feed it to some cereal eaters. Hi I'm Craig Chester Fernandez. I am 27 and I'm a musician and an actor. My name is Dipti and I wife Sahil. <laughs> okay, I do the wifing. Hi, I'm Anirudh. I'm an analyst at company. Just recently graduated and enthusiastic about food. Awesome. So, how much do you love Indian food? A good amount. Like Everyone who's grown up in India knows like Indian food is arguably the best, but trying out new stuff is always the best part of food. I love Indian food. There's so much great Indian food. I don't hate it. I mean, when again, like we we, we were in the last episode, we spoke about when done right. I think Indian food is amazing, and it kind of depends on where and how. But I don't really have a problem with it. I enjoy it every time I get a chance to eat it. The okay. more authentic, the better. How do you feel about chole bhature? Love. Oh yeah, no, it's it's very hard to do right, but when it's good, it's fantastic. I don't mind it. I definitely have it for breakfast some most days, you know, it's, it's, we have like uh, days where we have western food for breakfast and then there are days when we have Indian food. So we've had, I mean, we make chole bhature at home and I kind of enjoy it. Okay, so what would you rate regular chole bhature on a scale of 1 to 10 for you if done correctly? I would say around an 8. Yeah, I would say 8 is a fair rating for chole bhature. Not my favorite thing to eat in the world, but I definitely enjoy it and I would never say no to it. 6. Okay. Four and a half, five and a half on a really good day. On ten? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's brutal. Standards are high. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a nice looking batura. I love the grease. That is good beef. Sir. I haven't got a lot of bacon, but that is good beef. That is very good. As usual. I really like this. Um, it tastes like beef stew, in a way. It's got a very nice beefy flavor to it. And... I mean, it's perfect. The spices are perfect. It's not like too salty. It's not, you know, too spicy. It's really well balanced. And it's actually a very, again, another surprising combo. I'm just going to try it with this now. So, this is thicker batura than usual, but I kind of like that. It's got chew. I mean, I'm enjoying the beefy taste, but I'm not sure it's like chole, but it doesn't feel like chole batura to me. 
it's beef with chickpeas. Like both of these on its own are fantastic. Like can't fault them. Can I just say I love how it's going together? Even though it's a side character, it's still like you know not taking away from the main thing, but it just goes so well. The fact that it's just warm and like really, um, you know, this got that ba uh, bacon grease. I believe you must have you know put, used this for, and uh, yeah, it really works really well together as a combo. It tastes like a beef stew, but a very hearty one. It was very tasty. I would eat this. I am eating it, despite the fact that I've eaten lunch. So both of these on their own masterpieces. Like can't fault the. Hmm. Beef chole and the bacon, bacon batura. I like that name. But together, they, it's like you don't taste the bacon until right at the end. I don't know if that's a plus or a minus. Maybe that's. I don't know if that's what you're intending to go for. On their own, fantastic. Maybe the purpose of you know mopping up chole is lost. But overall, just fantastic. The chickpea has a very uh, interesting combination with the beef. I've never really tried it, but again, this is something I would definitely like try once you put the recipe out. But the beef is just too good yeah. to like pass up on. That's just fantastic. Awesome. Do you have enough to give this a rating for us on scale of one to ten? So, like I said, the regular chole butter is something I would rate an eight. But if you add like beef to that and bacon to that, this is another ten for me. I think this is amazing, and I think you're doing a really good job with this combo. An easy eight. It's really good. Easy. It's yummy. Yeah, easy. Six and a half, seven probably actually. Six, six. Let's go six point nine. Closer to seven. All right. That's not bad given that chole is the six point five point five for you. <laughs> cool. We'll take it. All right, folks. It's time for me to try this beef chole bature, and I've been waiting a long time to dig in. Of course, I've tasted it as we cook the dish, but the proper taste test. I love it. Beef, chickpeas, fried bread, it's the best. Let me finish chewing. This is really flavorful, nice and beefy. And I will say that my Bhatura skills need to be worked on. But I think I'm figuring it out. I managed to get one to properly puff up. I think the thickness. I was rolling it at was too thin, have it a little thicker and then it puffs up. But you know what? I think this dish is a winner. If you have time, make this dish and let me know how it turns out. And I will see you on the next episode of Will It Meat. Until then, cheers and keep cooking. Hey folks, if there is an Indian vegetarian dish you would like me to add meat to, let me know in the comments below and I'll do just that. And a big thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon and on the YouTube channel memberships. You are all awesome. Thank you.